homily for the tenth Sunday in Ordinary Time Year B. The opening verse of the Gospel reading of today, taken from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 3, verses 20 to 25, presents us with an exciting scenario. Jesus had immersed himself in his pastoral duties that he and his disciples could not even eat. Some friends and members of his family had set out to seize him, for they said, He is beside himself. Other translations would put it that he was out of his mind. Now, what would have led them to have this perception about him? When we read the Gospel of Mark chapter 3 verses 1 to 20, we see that Jesus had recently been in a confrontation with the Pharisees because he healed the man with the withered hands on a Sabbath. In that same passage, Jesus had left the comfort of his home and the security of his carpentry business and had started a little society of his own, made up of 12 men, some of whom were fishermen. It also comprised of a former tax collector and a radical nationalist, among others. He had thrown safety away and decided to be on the wrong side of the orthodox leaders who had what it took to cause a great deal of physical harm to him. Now, from a purely human point of view, the reaction of the family members and friends of Jesus is one that we can all relate to. Does it not happen at times that by following Jesus, we are looked upon as somewhat mad? Especially because we do not compromise and follow the normal laws of the world, in business, in matters of conscience, and even in our personal and social behavior. I didn't know many Christians out there who have lost their way because they preferred to conform to the approval of the world rather than to be tagged in sin for the kingdom of God. Are you a Christian who is ever willing to compromise his faith just to gain the consent of men? Or are you thinking of striving towards living a better life and the mockery and scorn of those around you seem to hold you back? Are you about to give up on that lucrative job that makes you act against your conscience and your friends try to remind you constantly of the deprivation you will face if you make that decision and as a result of that, you see yourself at a crossroad? Are you already struggling and everyone seems to question your sanity? Perhaps because you don't drink, you don't smoke, or you are not into hookups, or internet fraud, or other vices that the world applauds. Don't worry, you are not the first to be out of your mind, okay? Let us draw strength from Christ and dare to be different. If many Christians had not compromised their faith, but dared to be out of their minds for the sake of Christ, the world would have been a better place. Now, let us turn our gaze to the scribes in the Gospel reading of today. The scribes were the supposed religious elite of the society. They were the teachers of the law, and as such, they should have been in a better position to appreciate the message and the miracles of Christ. But here they were, trying to downplay the miracles of Christ by saying, Jesus worked the miracles he did through the power of the devil. What could have led them to make such an assertion? Jealousy, of course. Before the coming of Jesus, the scribes dominated the society's social and religious realm. But with Christ's coming and the crowd he was pulling, they were losing their relevance. And guess what? Out of jealousy, the so-called learned men like them put forward an argument that did not even fit into common sense. They said Jesus was casting out demons using the power of the devil. How often are we led to make irrational assertions and decisions as a result of jealousy and envy? In our world today, we still have people who try so much to downplay the things of the divine. More than ever before, things related to religion, spirituality, and divinity are under attack, and the reason is not far-fetched. Just like the scribes, many people see things of God as antithetical to their ego, their whims, and caprices. Thus, Rather than bending to follow the things of God, they struggle to suppress it, make it look irrelevant, and try to mock those who are there to them. Today, more than ever before, we are called to ask ourselves the following questions. Do we sin willfully, despite the conviction of the Holy Spirit? Do we oppose the work of the Holy Spirit? Do we justify ourselves in our sinful behavior? Do we insist on doing it in our own way? Or do we feel that, our sins are so great that they cannot be forgiven, and as a result of that, we resign to faith. To indulge in these is to sin against the Holy Spirit. And when Jesus says sins against the Holy Spirit cannot be forgiven, it is because one who has these attitudes insists on his own way and is not even convinced of the need to ask of mercy, and mercy cannot be forced on us.
difference in Christ, let us pray. Gracious God and Father, grant us a heart that is ready to accept the promptings of the Holy Spirit. And never let us feel that any sin of ours is greater than your love for us. May we always be contrite in hearts. Amen.